All right, we're recording, Gunner. Right on. Um, well, welcome everybody to the Mozilla Webmaker Community Call. Uh, we would love to start by welcoming our new team members and other first timers. Um, I'm going to go down this list in semi-random order. Let me start at line 30 in today's Etherpad. Malcolm, also known as Rafi Kilt. Uh, Malcolm, just want to say hello and just tell us a little bit about who you are. Star seven on mute if you're muted. All right, now we'll give you a Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute all lines. I'm all right, mute let's mute all lines. The conference has been muted. Gunnar, are you still there? Am I back? You are. Excellent. Hey, so let us go ahead. Um, is Toby Schachman out there and able to say hello as a first timer? Star seven to unmute. Hello. Toby, Hi. just say hello. Tell us a teeny tiny bit about yourself and how you're doing today. Hi, uh, I'm doing very well. Um, I'm uh, out in uh, the Bay Area. Um, I'm uh, excited to show some stuff later on in this conference that I'm working on. Um, my website's there if you want to like see sort of the kind of stuff I do. Uh, yeah. Excellent. Great to have you with us. Radhika, Radhika Tandon, are you with us? And can you hit star seven to unmute and say hello to the adoring crowd? All right. We'll presume Radhika is wrestling with her mute as well. Nick and Jason from Crafty, would you like to make an audible wave before we move forward? Star seven to unmute. Yeah. Uh, hello. This hello. is Jason, and, and this is Nick. And uh, hi, thanks, Toby. Um, so we're the guys behind Crafty, which is an online game editor and remixer. And later today we're going to be uh, talking about that. We're just a couple of co uh, university students, so yeah. uh, it's pretty exciting to be here. You know, thanks again for having us. Great to have you here. Great to have all these great new folks on the call. Did any of the other new folks manage to unmute so they can say hello before we move forward? All right. So I turn your attention to line 77 in the Etherpad. And for those not aware, there is a page at etherpad.mozilla.org slash capital S sept25, S-E-P-T-25, etherpad.mozilla.org slash sept25. And uh, I am looking at line 77. <clears throat> Blog posts, press, and weekly updates draw your attention to those for asynchronous offline consumption. And then onward, down to line 91, where Benjamin, the email blasting madman Simon, is going to tell us how the summer code party wrap-up is a going. Ben Simon, star seven to unmute. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? We can hear you just fine. All right. Um, so uh, last weekend, the final weekend of our three-month-long summer code party, um, and we can now come to you with nearly final statistics. Uh, so you wonderful people put together 685 events over the course of three months um, in at least 80 countries around the world, um, which is pretty freaking awesome. Um, the participant count currently stands at around 5,300. Uh, there are a few events that we're still um, working on getting some counts from, and it's all somewhat approximate anyway because a lot of the kitchen tables are things that you wouldn't actually really put RSVPs into an event system uh, for. Um, but either way, uh, pretty, pretty great. Um, this past weekend there were a bunch of great new events as well. Um, if you took any photos or put up any blog posts or had any great uh, moments or makes or anything like that from um, from this last weekend or just these last couple months that you wanted to make sure to see all that, that you haven't seen sort of promoted anywhere, um, please add those in, beneath line 100. Um, and then we also want, wanted to give you a sense of what's coming next. Um, so th this next couple weeks uh, are really two big things. One is to celebrate what's the awesome stuff that's, that's happened. Um, the primary driver for that is going to be the Webmaker Hall of Fame. And I won't steal Matt and Rebecca's Thunder. Um, you can see currently in line 22 uh, that that's the next topic of discussion. 
Um, and then the other piece is pivoting into uh, the Mozilla Bowl. Um, and similarly, I won't steal Michelle's thunder later on as well. Uh, but those are sort of the two things. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can get involved with each, uh, and also feed into each other as some of the Webmaker Hall of Fame folks are going to be able to um, come on our dime to one for the festival. Um, but that, that's sort of the big thing. The, the email outreach reference in line 107 is going to be both of those um, saying this is awesome, um, nominate people for the Hall, Hall of Fame, and also you know, get psyched for the festival. Um, and the other big festival thing to uh, look for in your inboxes very soon is that uh, a page from um, the U.S. election campaign that are happening right now. I don't know if, how many of you are on those, but you're often getting asked to nominate for, for uh, the campaign campaign with MIT. Um, we'll soon be launching a contest around the festival, uh, offering people a chance to get a small amount for a chance to win an expenses paid trip to London, um, which should be a fun campaign. Um, and there's one on, on line 114, there's sort of the, the most substantive piece of this, uh, which is a and there's already a couple of people filling things in. Uh, there's a request, request to speaking about what we learned um, from running the first ever Summer Code Park out there. Uh, there will be much more ways to think of this. So if you don't have a few hats that you can come up with later, there will be plenty of opportunities to share. Um, but hey, we'll let ben, ben, this is initial Gunner, thoughts you're, or any questions. Yeah. Ben, this is Gunnar. You're breaking up. Um, I'm just wondering if what technology you're on, and if you can get closer to any microphone. Um, I am holding a microphone about two millimeters from my mouth. Okay, breathe heavily um, on it. Okay. Nice. Um, okay, now we're good. All right. Um, uh, I mean, people are are doing the the. I was just saying that the the, the substantive thing that we really want people. Uh, thinking about right now is what key learnings there were for um, line 115, um, and if you know, and for, from I'm sorry, what key were from, for the side party in that section on 115? Um, if there are questions that we we'll talk through now, that's great. Um, and otherwise, just uh, keep typing away as you're doing. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Um, and thanks for folks filling in key learnings and uh, communications next steps and great assets. Super appreciated. Um, any other questions, comments, or feedback for Ben? Just really want to shout Ben out for doing amazing email campaigning through all of that and really sustaining a very strong narrative that did help to turn out all those people. And cannot thank our 685 party hosts enough and all the other people who did so much work from all sides, the Mozilla team and the larger community. All right. Hey, Any you other see, see, uh, learnings that people are sharing under line 115? I wonder if we should just invite folks who kind of want to share some thoughts about what we learned from, uh, from running Summer Code Party. It's kind of the first of its kind. So I wonder if people have thoughts on kind of aha moments or stuff we learned. So maybe I can, I'll say one thing, and I, it relates, Mark, here, uh, to something I said in a blog posting I just put up this morning, which is um, really, you know, while we designed Summer Code Party to, to get people out there trying WebMaker as a concept and trying popcorn and trying thimble uh, and trying other things, uh, and just to build some momentum, we really hadn't in the big strategy what we're doing thought about educators, you know, whether they think of themselves that way or not, as like a key community and key audience for who we're doing. And we certainly hadn't designed that into our team structure or our staffing structure or, or our plans in a deep, deep way. Although I think, you know, instinctually we, we kind of knew that was important and that's why Ben and Michelle and others stepped up to run this. Um, and I think we've learned a huge amount uh, about that there is an educator constituency out there who both we can help 
uh, and also who can help us build WebMaker. And so I, I would say the biggest learning for me coming out of um, summer code parties, you need to put more resources and more people behind backing and helping all the kind of people who uh, ran summer code parties all summer. And so that's something that, that I'm committed to doing. We're actually moving some, some people and some resources around <coughs> to make the, the kind of support we were able to give in a light way during summer code parties, something we do all the time and, and we do systematically. Um, so I, I guess I would throw that in. And I guess you know who, what I would say as a shout out uh, to all the people who did summer code parties, other than just a huge thank you, I guess I, I had the realization in some ways that you know you were the like the first people who installed, and I don't know if anybody here is old enough to remember this, uh, you know Phoenix when it was called Phoenix and not Firebird or not Firefox, uh, and you know if you went back and you looked at that very very early first flip uh, out of the Mozilla suite and into Phoenix and what eventually came Firefox. It was a bunch of committed people who got it, who got it going and got people to try it. Uh, and I really saw in all of you people who organized summer code parties summer, this summer that same spirit, the people who got it before anybody else did. Uh, and so you know, we really want to keep working with those people, understand them, see how we can help them. Um, and, and that was, a, I think, a pretty big uh, payoff from summer code party just to see that. Um, and now, now it's time to act on it. Very cool. Gunnar, are you still there? I'm still here, yeah. Thank you, Mark. And thanks to the people that continue to pour really great thoughts in in the 130s of this Etherpad. Great, great stuff. Matt, are you seeing anything there you want to pull out as really jumping out at you as summarizing or capturing the zeitgeist between 117 and 136? I mean, there's stuff that we've talked about before, like on line 25, like huge success with Mazrat. Um, so there's kind of plus a million on that one. Um, yep. I'm just looking through if there's anything else that we haven't already talked about in a previous call. Yeah, but I just I want to echo. I think it's actually plus ten quintillion on line 126, <laughs> just to be mathematically correct. But yeah. Excellent. Well, overall, I think we could not be more grateful for how amazingly uh, diverse and high energy all of these parties were and all the learnings that have come out of this uh, summer code party. And I think you know, an interesting conversation that we'll move to in the near future is what does our next wave of code partying or other distributed uh, learning and making events look like? So we invite people to be thinking about that and being ready to share your ideas and what else we can do to get people actively learning and learning by making and doing because uh, this was just round one of a lot of different activities that we hope to facilitate and see take place globally as we move forward. All right, I am looking at the clock and looking at the etherpad and I am going to suggest that everyone turn their attention to line 151. Reminds me of a certain beverage. Peer Assist, Webmaker Hall of Fame, Open Matt and Rebecca, please tell us what this is all about. Rebecca, are you there? Star seven? Hi there, guys. Uh, hey. Could everybody take a look at uh, the link on, on line 162? Um, what we have there is sort of the 1.0 of a page called the Webmaker Hall of Fame. Um, and we're looking for your ideas and advice to help make this better. Um, if you notice any bugs or um, if you have any suggestions on how to improve it, we'd love to hear that. Um, the idea I see on the questions, um, the idea for this page is to sort of do a sort of bird's eye view of everything that WebMaker has created so far. Um, and to that end, um, it could use a lot more input. Um, as I might have mentioned before, this is sort of a collection of the things that we saw um, while we were running as fast as we could. So one of the things that we'd like to do is, is actually get the very best material that um, we've seen over the summer onto that page. Um, but essentially, yes, we're, we're looking for input. Um, we're looking for advice on making it better. And if you notice anything that's broken, please let us know. That about cover it, Matt? Yeah, I think so. Um, I guess 
you know, we could just take some of the questions under line 170. Um, so our call to action, I guess, like in terms of the peer assist uh, that we're looking for help for today, the stuff that Rebecca mentioned. Um, so we're, we're hoping people can do QA on this prototype page. Um, but also on line under 64, I guess the question we have for this group is, um, is this version ready to ship? We know it's incomplete and missing lots of stuff, um, but is it far enough along that folks think it's, it's ready to ship? Um, or does it need more time and more polish? Um, so that's kind of the, the call to action on, the, on the, the peer assist part. I guess our call to action for the Hall of Fame is inviting our community to celebrate each other and to call out people that really inspired them this summer. So the call to action is basically if you saw something or made something or worked with somebody amazing this summer, um, let us know about it so that we can give them a high five. Who, do we know, I'm not looking at that page, who, uh, who's already in there, or are, we, or are we working from a blank slate? Uh, no, so we're not um, working from a blank slate. There's uh, like categories, so for example, we've tried to break um, things down into categories like okay, you've Zilla yeah. reps. You've got the people in there instructors. Who, I would, who I would mention. Okay. So yeah, it's a mix of like, um, best people, best projects, best kind of innovations or aha moments, that kind of stuff. Hi, Matt. It's Doug. Um, hey, Doug. What might be re really useful, um, you know like on the WebMaker page, when you click on, for example, symbol, it, it takes you down the page like an anchor link. Um, having something like that at the top so you know what categories there are without having to scroll down? Hmm, that's cool. That's a good idea. I guess that thanks, Doug. That's uh, that's a good idea. Uh, I guess the like the first question on 175. What is the call to action? It's not clear. Um, so it'd be good if folks have suggestions on how we could make that clear. I mean, the copy. I'll just paste the copy from the top of the page, maybe into the pad, so that maybe folks can help make that messaging clear. So there's another, another question around plan and timeline. Um, so we're hoping, depending on how the kind of feedback we get from all of you, we're hoping with uh, web dev teams' uh, help to push this to live later this week. Um, so once, once it's live, um, you know, Rebecca and I have some early sort of thinking around um, how we can promote through Twitter, through Facebook. Um, and we've been chatting with Ben Simon about including it in some of the email outreach that he has planned as well. So there's, uh, there's these suggestions are really great. Thank you. <laughs> so Rebecca, do we? Do we have, um, do you think this gives us enough to kind of um, like file some of these suggestions into the, into the ticket, make some improvements, and try to get this ship later this week? Yeah, I see, I see a lot of great stuff that we can do right away. Um, and I can see some ways that we might be able to break it down and make it more effective. I mean, for me, the, the call to action is to make submitting content that you're proud of. Um, sharing it with us um, easier for the people who are out there making things, and also to give them a little bit of an idea of what's possible. So um, there's a lot of great suggestions for us in there. I think we can go ahead. If you're happy, Matt? Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Um, Moving us along, let us take a look at line 196, Michelle Thorne, the festival goddess. Michelle, what can you tell us about the festival itself? Yeah, everyone, you should come to London, November 9th or 11th. We're going to have fun. 
Um, now, just an update from um, mainly from the program as pieces come together, and, and lots of you are already working on um, bits of the program. Um, so I just wanted to share the growing schedule page on line 202. Note this does not, while there are times listed, those times are irrelevant. Uh, it's more to give you a sense of the kinds of activities people are suggesting, all sorts of cool things from like making a banana piano with the Makey Makey from the MIT Media Lab, or teaching people how to code Arduinos and make web pages and stuff like that. Um, so I invite you to, to take a look. Um, and I just wanted to call out our themes because I think that they're kind of interesting ways of thinking about um, what kinds of activities are happening at MozFest. So um, there's a list here, and um, I just wanted to mention one or two of them is in a particular shout out. So um, Chloe's been working a lot on a hackable games track. She, she'll have a zone at the festival around um, a game arcade. It's called a game arcade. And she'll join, I think, next week or the week after and share a little bit about what kinds of games people will have there. But it's taken this idea of can we make games, particularly web games, that are designed to be hackable, and then through the process of hacking them, also learning some skills along the way. Um, she's got a pretty exciting list of, um, of indie games and existing games um, and little kernels of ideas for games um, that could go in that direction. Um, and then another one I wanted to just call out for today's chat is a new zone which is um, called Hacktivate Learning. Um, it was inspired by a conversation we had at All Hands in Toronto around um, Instructor community is a, um, perhaps not the right way we want to think about this group of people who are trying to activate and help others learn about the web. So we coined a word called hacktivators, which <laughs> you can either love or hate. But um, we we want to have a zone at the festival that's also a place for these instructors, hacktivators, to um, share best practices, to plan new projects see what each other are doing, um, and just have it be a big tent with um, yeah, all sorts of content around building this kind of community of people who help teach others. So we're really excited about that zone. And there will also be more about those things in the coming weeks. Um, and I guess just the big, the big things to call out in today's call is definitely register um, if, you, if you haven't yet on line 215. Um, you can also sign up to volunteer. We love volunteers, and it's a fun part of the. It's a fun way to get involved in the festival, and we we also need help spreading the word. So um, even if we think the festival is going to be really interesting, maybe not everybody else in the world is aware of it yet. So um, if there's people you know who you think would be a good fit, um, please send them a link and just let, um, help them see what's out there. And we've got some draft links or draft tweets there if you'd like to share. So that's the main bit. And I also am happy to answer other kinds of questions about MozFest if people have them for now. Hey, Gunnar. Gunnar here. Thank you, Michelle. And taking a look, let me invite everybody to take a look at the notes and all kinds of tweetables and other good stuff that is there. Any other questions? I'm checking the chat line. I really like Michelle Levesque's invitation to activate your collective inner powers. I think it's time for some demo wear. Let me move us to line 236 where Toby has an interactive introduction to graphics programming. Toby, are you with us in the audio channel? Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, Toby. We can Hi. hear you fine. And uh, yeah, so we're, all, we're now looking over on the, uh, the Global Crossing uh, pad, the link that you put in there. Let us turn our attention to the Games Garden. Uh, is this the Crafty People screen up? It is. You can just uh, swap control over if you want, Matt. Oh, I see. Uh, all right. Um, okay. So, hello. I'm Toby. Um, just to give a little background on me, um, 
I have a background in math and computer science, but uh, for the past two years I've been focusing on just making art. Uh, I've been at this program called ITP, which is a uh, um, art and technology school. Um, so I've had the chance to work with a lot of artists um, and doing programming with artists and seeing how artists pick up programming and, and uh, how to teach programming. Um, so like, uh, this is what I look like. Um, this is some of my work on my web page. Um, my thesis project was this thing called recursive drawing, where um, it was an experiment in uh, figuring how how um, the computer science concept of recursion could be represented in like a visual, spatial, manipulable way um, that would appeal to people who don't really think in terms of traditional programming, uh, like the traditional programming mindset. Um, so this is sort of like my um, my life ambition is to figure out new ways of getting artists to be able to interact richly with computers. Um, so I wanted to just quickly show my project that I'm working on next, um, which is called an interactive introduction to graphics programming. And uh, the idea of this is to get artists programming on the GPU, uh, the graphics processor. Um, as sort of a, a first programming language. Um, and the whole thing will be an interactive book that I'm writing. So uh, interspersed with the text will be, for example, these live examples. Um, so if you're looking at my screen, I have one up. Or you can just pull up the uh, proposal document from the etherpad. Um, but the live examples, essentially, you can, you can uh, edit the code on the right, and then you'll see the the output change dynamically on the left. Um, these are pixel shaders, which um, are, of course, uh, run on the graphics processor. Um, and they work really well for doing, um, for doing live programming, because they're essentially stateless. So as you manipulate them, it's very clear exactly how your change is going to be um, taken into a running program. Um, then there's one other demo on this proposal document, which is um, a thing that lets you, um, as you mouse over an output image, you can see how that pixel, that particular pixel, was computed. Um, so the way that pixel shaders work, which is what this book is about, um, pixel shaders essentially run a program for every uh, pixel on the screen. So um, so if I'm over a certain pixel, it'll show me on the right how um, how all the numbers were computed. These red and green lines um, are ISO lines, which show me where a particular line will have a constant value. So um, in this case, the red shows me everywhere where this radius on line 8 uh, will have a constant value, and the green shows me everywhere where angle will have a constant value. Um, and the idea of these interactive diagrams is to help people um, more quickly understand what's going on in a, pro in a program. So um, there are going to be lots of these interactive examples and interactive diagrams. Um, I started mocking up a, a ray tracing one, which would show um, how, a, how a beam of a ray of light would bounce um, using some ray tracing system. Um, so yeah, so there are uh, so I guess there are like sort of three ideas um, around this. The first is um, supporting alternative programmers, so supporting artists learning how to program and uh, catering to like a different way of thinking about programming. Um, the second idea is uh, that there would be um, people should learn the next generation of programmers. I think should be learning how to program on the GPU alongside programming on the CPU because that's what I think the future of programming is. To understand how we can uh, program these massively parallel systems, um, and also GPU programming really naturally introduces a lot of great math and geometry concepts. And uh, the final 
uh, ideas that this would be an interactive book. So all of the text would be written alongside all of the interactive examples. It wouldn't just be like a book that has a few interactive things um, or vice versa, but very much integrated into the flow of the book would be uh, these interactive examples. Um, so I'll try to, I guess, answer a few questions. Um, so what was where the books you used to learn this stuff? So that's the thing is that there are no really great resources for learning GPU programming unless you're already a really good programmer who understands how to read documentation and stuff like this. So uh, the idea would be that this would be an introduction for people who have never programmed before potentially. You could just pick this right up. Um, can you write this up as a potential project for webmaker.org? Um, so I think this would be fantastic if there is some way to align this with what uh, Mozilla is working on, which is why I'm uh, which is why I wanted to present it here. Um, so yeah, any any way that this could be integrated into the uh, types of resources that you guys are working on um, would be great. Um, someone else's code to produce the second example. I don't know. This is this is just a uh, the second example is just um, like a introduction to polar coordinates sort of. Um, Uh, and yeah, the shader toy is like the so there are a lot of people who are working with live coding um, for doing these GLSL pixel shaders because, as I said earlier, it's a very natural fit for a live coding interface, which is one of the reasons that I'm also exploring these particular types of programs. Um, can you come to Mozilla Festival, which is in uh, London, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if I can make it, but uh, that that would be that would be cool. I don't know. Maybe um, someone could email me and figure out how I could come. I mean, I'm not. Uh, I don't really have the resources to get over there right now uh, on that short notice, but I would love to. It sounds awesome. Uh, Thimble GPU, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so uh, if uh, if I'm ho hosting the first uh, shader meetup in San Francisco on October 3rd, so if you're in the Bay Area and you'd like to talk to me about this, it would be awesome to meet you. And uh, if you just um, on line 242, there's a, a Google group that you can just add your email to. Um, and uh, if you want to just talk not there, uh, just please email me, tqs at alum.mit.edu. Um, so thanks for, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, I'll be happy to try to answer any more questions. Well, thank you so much. That is really, really impressive stuff, and I think there's some genuine excitement in the questions section. Uh, so very, very cool. Um, and I think everyone is very excited to know when it is tweetable or otherwise shareable with the larger world. So I think this is exactly the kind of tactile, interactive, highly responsive learning experience that we hope to create lots of. So thank you for this very amazing leadership. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. So and again, I would uh, draw people's attention to line 264 where a properly obfuscated email address is available if you want to get in touch with Toby and the Shader Meetup on October 3rd in San Francisco. All right, let me move us along. We've got more fun on this agenda, line 268 in the Etherpad. I've got Nick Leo and Jason Church talking about remixable games. Bless their souls for also pasting in the callinfo.com link so that anybody can get over into the uh, screen share. All right. Are you guys auditorily accessible? Nick, Jason, are you there? Yeah, we're here. Yes, we are. Excellent. Take it away. Okay, yeah. so desktop. Yeah, I think the desktop is just having little issues. Let me just talk about Crafty. Um, it's sort of in line with uh, what was being talked about before with these hackable games. Uh, what we are trying to do is actually Sort of advanced, you know, Web 2.0 allowed people to create content, share that back out on the web, and we just feel the next step is actually being able to remix and iterate each other's ideas all uh, in a single browser space. So uh, what we've built uh, is it sharing? It, I think it's sharing now. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone's able to see it. Um, 
what we're going to go through is just showing some of the demos. And this is all built with HTML5 and JavaScript. You know, it's all in browser. No need to download anything, uh, anything like that. So what we feel like is that the history of games sort of shows this genealogy. So we're just going to jump into Pong here. And there's a very distinct sort of iterative line uh, when you see a game go from something like you know, Pong to Breakout to Space Invaders. Uh, but we feel it's like, what if you were able to do this all in the browser in this like, community space where you don't have these separate developers working on separate ideas. You're all working on um, sort of this transitional line that starts with the seed. So uh, let's just go into, jump into any of the games here. And what we've built is an editor. Um, so you just want to pull one of those up. Uh, so you can play the game, obviously, like your typical portal. But what we have also have is this editor that you can pull up in your browser. Um, and rather than, we, we were debating a lot with, how do you get people to make games? Because inherently games are incredibly difficult and they take up a lot of different resources to produce. So we, just, we opted for this sort of visual style. You know, we have this graphical user interface that people uh, can just drag and drop um, various items into the desktop or into this browser space and instantly play them back out. So why don't you go ahead and just drag some, you know, Nick was dragging around some items. Uh, you can bring them in, and the way that you actually edit a game mechanic or their properties is you just right-click on them, and we have these stickers that you can drag in. Um, Maybe a little bit slower. Yeah, a little bit slower. So, you know, let's go to the right. We can grab like an action sticker, or grab an art piece. Um, yeah, just grab any sort of art piece there, Nick. Uh, let's yeah. Just, yeah. Drag in. We got you know these little hand-drawn ponies, and now we can drag in these stickers. So yeah, let's give it the spinner property. So now it says you, you can you know change its property of you know spin tw uh, two circles each second in a counterclockwise position. And when you play it, it instantly uh, showcases that. But the really cool thing, you know, we've made it easier for to conceptualize how to actually build these games, so that people don't have to you know worry about the technical skills. They can just worry about producing fun content. And it's like, we thought that was cool, but the real, uh, the real next step was actually sharing it back out. So we played this web portal game. We came into the editor, and now after editing it, we can share this back out. And it instantly, you know, once, <laughs> yeah. Um, it wasn't meant to be this wide. <laughs> yeah. So just change its name. But it instantly will save this game into its own unique web portal. Oh. <laughs> or, uh, sorry, that little... We're not used to having such a huge monitor to work with. But uh, once this is shared back out, this will go live back onto the web where anybody, you know, you don't even need to sign up for an account, can instantly remix our game. And it becomes this creative conversation that, you know, creates a giant branching tree of game ideas and game um, designs that anyone can sort of jump in and play with. So, um, you know, it prompts you. You can paste on your uh, your Facebook wall, and obviously in the future, we, we really want to explore uh, how to get people to just be creative and jump in and tinker around with stuff. So you're going to see here, Nick just added that you know another game onto this growing tree, and now anyone else can jump in. Any of you guys here watching it can instantly jump in, remix that game, and add to this branch. Um, we're really excited about it. You know. It's a really, we feel it's a really cool idea, and this is where no one else is really trying to do something like this. Um, do, you want to, do you want to talk a bit about the technology? Yeah, do you want to talk a bit about the tech? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so the entire game engine is based off Grant Skinner's CreateJS, which uh, is, has been sponsored by Adobe. And, and now uh, Flash actually, Flash CS6 actually exports out, exports animations out to uh, create JS, which means Flash developers can actually use their animations, like in a, on roadmap, Flash animators will be able to use their animations inside Crafty. I'm a Flash animator myself, so I, I'm definitely looking forward, looking forward to uh, putting that in as well. And so yes, it's all it's all HTML5. Uh, you know, the editor is uh, using CSS3. Um, um, do you want to talk a bit about um, just like the libraries we're also using for the CreateJS? Uh, 
Well, this create JS and then this jQuery and some libraries I wrote. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's <laughs> pretty, I don't know, it, it's all open tech right yes, now. Yes, all open tech. Um, open source. And, you know, we'd love to just sort of hear uh, what people think about in terms of where they'd like to see this go. Uh, obviously, we're still trying to figure out um, do we make it completely open source? Do you allow people to actually write code and write their own unique code for it? We're not really right. sure where we want to bring that yet, but um, let me just sort of go through here. Uh, someone's asking if we're coming to Mozilla Fest, and obviously, yep. you know, it's the same sort of thing. If we're able to get the resources, we'd love to come down, especially with the Hackle Games. I think this is very much in line with what uh, Mozilla is trying to do themselves. Uh, and we'd love to be part of that conversation with them. Uh, and yes, we would plan to expose the JavaScript. Uh, so yes, it's based off, uh, it's, you, uh, it's a game engine I wrote uh, on top of CreateJS, and we're definitely thinking of open sourcing that so that people can also write extensions, but you know, just, you know, it's open sourcing and it makes sense. Oh, right, and someone asked. Um, <laughs> oh, haven't you told people about your Kickstarter we, yet? Yeah, we do have a Kickstarter app. We'll bring it up. If you go to Kickstarter, you can um, just look up Crafty. We've got a few days left, and obviously we, we, we'd love to get the support to continue working on something like this. Um, we're both students. We're just doing this in our spare time. Uh, but if we were it funded, you know, we'd love to sort of just drop out of school <laughs> for the semester and just keep working on it, if at all possible. That's sort of the ideal um, situation. But money to not go to college. <laughs> yeah. Um, but oh yeah, we'll, we'll put a link here. Uh, just how to keep in touch. Um, but yeah, yeah, apart from that, you know, we'd love to hear uh, once we get this email, just what you guys think in general. And you know, thanks again for your time and letting us sort of showcase this. And feel free to go build any games you want with it. It's all live right now. Crafty.com. Yeah. It's crafty.com. <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, thank you guys. <laughs> That was awesome. I, I think you just succeeded in melting the largest number of collective brains ever on one of these calls. Really, really great stuff, and I think people share your excitement for your innovations. Um, so, and do you all feel like you've addressed the questions that are in lines 291 through 293? Anything there you might want to speak to before we move on? Uh, let's just see. Okay, someone asked if it was Box2D based. We do have Box2D in there. It's actually pretty uh, yeah, the, easy to get that in. Yeah, the JavaScript port of, oh, we didn't show the, any making a little physics thing in there, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah all, all Box2D based. Just trying to see. Oh, no, of course it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. It's just a nice little extension that makes, it's a nice bit of polish that we put into the editor. And you know, people love physics. Um, I think we answered all the other questions from there though. But uh, like I said, if anyone has any other personal questions or whatever, feel free to email us. We're always checking your email and keeping in contact. Yeah. Right on. Thank you both very, very much. Okay, hoping to see you boys in London in a few weeks. So, um, hey, we have a line 303 in today's Etherpad. I think that may be the highest number I can remember saying out loud. Jess? User testing and evaluation. Do you want to spend a couple minutes telling us about that? Yeah, I just wanted to do a quick shout out because uh, right after this call um, at, at noon Eastern Time, uh, we're going to have a 15 minute just uh, get to know who's interested in this topic of user testing and evaluation. I'm going to be running a session at the Mozilla Festival on. Um, user testing and specifically designing version one of a user testing kit that can be used by MOFOs as well as Mozillians, um, you know, committed people who are really committed to user testing and how are already doing it and just giving them some structure and or um, feedback to oh sorry, a way to feedback to us um, all of the great information and um, findings that they're already finding. <laughs> um, so I put the steps online 306 down, basically I have the call-in number and there's an etherpad. And even if you are interested but can't make the 15-minute call, uh, please just shoot me an email or, or send, send some sort of um, SOS message over to me to let me know that you're interested and I'll get back to you um, off through a back channel. Right on. Thank you. And I do encourage folks to be on that call if they can in the next hour. All right. So
So uh, I really I skipped over line 302, a clap out loud for At Foresto, who referred both the project to webmakers. So thank you, At Foresto, for bringing excellence into our realm. So uh, I believe that we are coming to the end of the audible portion of this agenda. I draw your attention to the nonverbal update starting on line 324, as well as the calendar and project call calendars at 333 and 337. Next week's agenda is already ready for you to populate with great agenda items on line 343. Matt Thompson and other folks at Command Central, do you have any other topics that we should broach on this call today? I don't think so, Gunnar. I just would encourage folks to click on the link in line 335. And even though the summer code party is technically over, there's lots of events happening this okay. week in okay. India, in Nashville, um, Paraguay. Um, so yeah, click on the you know, oh, but hey, some of this here. We're getting some background noise. Hey, hey, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> it's okay. We're wrapping up anyway. <laughs> Just have a look at the events on line 335. Lots of awesome in there. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, were you Michelle Thorne? Yes, you were talking in German to the world. Oh, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded really good. <laughs> I was I sharing like the all the all the cool photos from the Philippines, which I will share now with the whole world. <laughs> Excellent. I could just say that Michelle awesome. Levesque is relieved that she is not the guilty party. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we're wrapped up. I think we are wrapped up. Thank you, everybody, for a phenomenal call. Really great demos. Really great report backs. And we'll see you next week, same time, same channel. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.